This is some low budget Okabe cosplay. You know that one anime you watch that just changes the way you look at the world? Okay, maybe it's not that extreme, but Steins Gate is one of those anime that is near and dear to me. So when I heard that there was more Steins Gate being made, I was so pumped and ready to have my mind bent, my heart torn apart again. This isn't really a sequel, nor is it a prequel. It's a midquel. Before we go deeper, are the Steins Gate adaptations one of your favorites? And if so, which one do you like more? But if you're not a big fan of the series, what do you not like about it? Let me know in the comments. So in the first Steins Gate, after he reaches the Beta world line, where Mayuri lives and Kurisu dies, he runs into another issue where World War III ultimately happens due to her dad murdering her and stealing her time travel theory. So he tries to save Kurisu again, but it seems like her dying in the Beta world line is inevitable. After he ends up accidentally killing her, he gives up and resigns to his fate. And so that's where Steins Gate Zero comes in. This is gonna be a long one, so I'll have time points in the description where you can jump around. Steins Gate Zero starts off with him moving on with his life, or at least trying to. If you've come to love his ostentatious and delusional personality of Kilma from the original, prepare for a big change. The mad scientist is now a sad scientist. He's become a hollow shell of his former self, and it's really honestly depressing. It feels like he's settled for a half-baked result. He's going to college, he joined clubs, he's become a normie. And that's just not Okabe at all. But his monotony is shaken when he discovers a couple of scientists, Maho and Leskinen, who managed to preserve Kurisu's memory into an AI system called Amadeus. He became attached to the system as time goes on. And I gotta say, even though she's still AI, still best girl, there's a lot of chemistry between Okabe and Kurisu. But back to the story, Suzuha reveals that a girl named Shina Akagari came along with her from the future. And after finding her, they're left with more questions than answers. It seems that her memories have been scrambled or tampered with. And after she was in their care, they were attacked at the lab, again. Honestly, that door has a security of wet toilet paper. But anyways, it's similar to the first Steins Gate where you're totally confused at where, this, where the whole show is going, but at the very end, everything just clicks together in place. There's much more plot lines in this one. We don't only follow Okabe's point of view, but we also get to see things from the other character's perspective, such as Maho struggling with her feelings of inadequacy, Daru trying to make sure he marries his future wife, and Mayuri regretting her choice of letting Hyoin Kyoma die along with Kurisu. This is definitely a good move, because it's much better than focusing only on Okabe, especially at this point in his life where he's practically dead inside. These side stories, especially Daru's plot, might feel like it's distracting from the main story, but I think it's necessary. A story that goes on for more than 120 minutes or a typical movie needs to breathe. We can only hold for so long on a Moby character before we get tired. So the comedic and heartwarming mini arc of Daru becoming closer with Yuki is a nice breath of fresh air in between all those depressing and serious points of the story. Overall, I like the direction they went. I'm sure we all have those what if moments when we finish a show and finally we get to see a canon what if story. They went with a different direction this time, focusing on the mental trauma and other characters until Okabe gets his old flame, that fire within him rekindled. And when he comes back, it's freaking awesome. I was like, hell yeah, my mad scientist Kyoma's back. It's honestly very satisfying to see and it gets you pumped up. And finally, everything just feels like the old Steins Gate. A staple of Steins Gate is the relatable characters. While in the original it was laser focused on the two central characters, the side characters, they were still likable as well. But in Steins Gate, they build on those likable characters even further. Even though Okabe had one of the biggest change and growth this season, it was spread out over the entire 23 episodes. And as stated, he went through something extremely traumatic, so it makes sense for him not to be able to change back to his former self that quickly. A complaint I heard against Okabe's character was that 
Why didn't he take action sooner? Come on, just get over it already. Sorry, did he not watch the first anime at all? He's seen Mayuri die over and over and over again for countless times. He's also ended up accidentally killing Makise, trying to save her. So can you blame him? He's a broken man from going through all of that. Most people only go through loss or they only lose a person once in their life. You don't lose the same person over and over again unless I guess you resuscitate them with like a defibrillator and then they die again. I don't know. But the human brain is not meant to handle that sort of input. And the reason why he, he's just kind of sitting around and not doing much is because he's expended all conceivable options. So in a strange way, he's comfortable in this position because at least Mayuri is alive and well. If he tried to shake the status quo by trying to build a time machine again, that could result in live, reliving another hell over and over again. So when he finally decides to take action again, it's at a point in the story where it makes the most sense and isn't out of character. Speaking of big character changes, Mayuri in the original was mostly like a prop or like a damsel in distress. She didn't really get to do much because she was the one always being protected. But after witnessing Okabe's spirit dying after giving up, she regrets not being there to slap some sense into him. During her time of need, he was there for her, so Mayuri feels like she needs to do something as well. She's unable to go on every day watching the pain and emptiness in his eyes knowing that she could have done something. So she goes back into time with Suzuha and tells her past self to not let Kyoma give up. Maho is a new addition to the main cast and I welcome that. She's got a sharp personality, not unsimilar to Makise's, and in general she fits well within the future Gadget's lab members. A big part of her character was her self-doubt when it comes to her abilities. She felt like she was always been in Kurisu's shadow, and I can understand that to a certain degree. When you watch someone younger than you doing groundbreaking discoveries and research and just getting showered with praise daily, it can really wear down on you to the point where it can destroy your self-esteem. So she's always seen Kurisu as like Mozart and herself as Salieri due to the dynamic of the composers. She's always had the ability and skill within her, but she couldn't see it because she was worrying too much. And it was actually Kurisu who recognized it within her. So eventually in the future, she expanded on Kurisu's accomplishments and achieved a time leap of two weeks. Daru in the original felt like a side character because the show mostly focused on Okabe and Kurisu. He really didn't need to have development and that was fine because his character worked for that purpose. So it was nice to see him finally get some attention as there's a good amount of people out there who are socially awkward or not the conventional definition of attractive, the struggle he goes through hits home for a lot. He doesn't think highly of himself as well and doubts why a beautiful person like Yuki would even be interested in him in the first place. So his friends do all sorts of stuff to him to prepare him for his date, but he eventually finds out that Yuki likes him much more when he's himself and not putting on an act. Ultimately, he was able to show Suzuha a nice slice of normal life and their family being happy once before World War III hits. Unfortunately, Kagari in the anime was less of a character and more of a plot device saying mama, mama, mama. more times than the number of Okabe's time leaps. There's nothing inherently wrong with that, but there are still parts of her history that are a mystery to me. Hey, that kind of rhymed. Maybe everything will make much more sense if I play the visual novel. Overall, the characters are all familiar with similar roles, except for Ferdinand Brown and Moeka, who are working with the protagonist this time. I kind of like that. Moek is pretty cute, so I like to see this change. The art style is pretty similar to the original with a few exceptions. People have said that the art as a whole didn't evolve that much from the original, but I'm okay with that. Steins Gate just looks right with this kind of art. It's minimalist, it's very simple, but there's an interesting characteristic to it. If we had went with the UFO table, or production IG look, it wouldn't feel the same. But if I recall correctly, the original definitely had a stylistic look on top of its simplicity. There's almost a hazy, ghostly look to it. It's still there in Steins Gate Zero, but not as extreme. The animation quality is improved, but 
the fight scenes are kind of awkward. Um, during the big battle scene on top of the radio building, it seems like space doesn't matter at all. Like, how did a whole bunch of soldiers get the drop on Suzuha when she was on the roof? I mean, she was looking at her phone, but then suddenly Mayuri was taken hostage? Did she not see out of the corners of her eyes? I don't know, maybe that might be a script or directing issue though. But when Kagari fought the soldiers, it looked like she was gliding and dodging all the bullets. <laughs> Is that some sort of future combat technique? But putting all that aside, Steins Gate really isn't about fight scenes. Like, this is not a combat sort of anime, this is a time travel story, and it does a really good job at it. But the visuals still feel like Stein's Gate, so I'm glad they didn't completely overhaul the visual style. Stein's Gate music is great in general. They're very atmospheric and build on that haunting and, and theme of repetition in this show. And there's a lot of songs that carry a ton of emotional weight, like in episode 12, with that mystery song that spans time itself. Um, but the most impactful ones are the ones that are from the original. The best example is when Hacking to the Gate plays, when Mayuri slaps him in the face in the final episode. It's just too overpowered. I got instant goosebumps, and it just felt so epic. Normally when I watch anime, I only listen to the opening and endings of the first and last episodes of a show, but this was one of the times I stayed for all of the episodes. When I first heard them, I was like, yep, I'm watching Stein's Gate. And the ending especially is a song that will get stuck in your head and haunt you for days to come. So to sum everything up, I'm glad I watched Steins Gate Zero because after watching the original and the movie, I still didn't really have much motivation to play the visual novel. But now after watching Zero, I want more. I want to experience the story again and dig deeper into the narrative. It's one of the most satisfying expansions I've seen for a story. It was fun to, to try wrapping my head around all those time travel theories and world lines. So I'll probably have even more fun doing that in the visual novel. If you haven't watched Steins Gate Zero yet, and for some reason you're watching this video, if you like the original, I'm confident in saying that you'll have a blast watching this. It's definitely a familiar feeling, but touches on different and slightly darker themes this time. While it might be a bit confusing and slow burning at the start like the original, what it builds up to is a storyline more complex and gripping that ties into the original anime's ending. So if you're still watching this point, thank you! I'm trying to release more videos each month instead of every other year, so if you like what you saw, hit the like and subscribe button and follow me on social media. And as always friends, thank you for watching, and I will see you soon.